I have to re-examine what is the nature of I. Okay. Now here, Vedanta starts with a very simple logic. It starts with a logic that anything that you objectify is an object and it is not I. Okay. I am the one who objectifies different things in the universe. So with reference to this table or book or computer, I have no confusion that it is not I because I objectify it. Okay? My I begins with the my body. Okay? Nobody may be saying that I am the body, but every when anybody makes a statement that I am fat or I am thin or I am dark or I am light, what does it mean? Or that I am fair. What does it mean? It means that I equate myself to be equivalent to a given attribute of my body. Okay. So in fact when I say I am fair, I am totally identifying my identity is equivalent to the pigmentation in, on my skin. Okay. And it's not an ordinary identification because so much of our complexes belong to all our identification with the body. Now let us look at the fact, is there I and body are exactly the same or not? Okay. So we use the logic that anything that I objectify is not I. Using this logic, you will see that different conditions of my body is something that I objectify. From the time of the birth to now, I have undergone so many changes in terms of my physical being. Okay? My digestive system has undergone a change, my eyes have undergone a change, the hearing capacity sometimes undergoes a change, the circulatory system goes a change, at the level of cells, the cells, many cells are disappearing and new cells are appearing. All these are, all this is happening in my presence. Okay? I am the person who comes to know different conditions of my body and body is an object of what I know. Okay? So therefore, I am not as good as the body, body is an object of my knowing. The other way of looking at it is that body is nothing but different cells put together. If one cell I can put under microscope and I can see it, it is an object. Okay. Now if one cell is not I, many different cells put together intelligently to perform a given set of functions does not become I. So this physical body is not I, where I actually mistake it to be I. It is true that you have a special relationship with one physical body. Okay? Among all the different bodies, you have relationship with one given body. There is no doubt about it. Okay? Like among all cars, you have a given relationship with one car and you can say this is my car. But that car doesn't become I. Similarly, all the different bodies are there. One body is something with which you have special connection, but it doesn't become I. Okay. Now, so Sthula Sharira, the physical body is called Sthula Sharira in Sanskrit and that is, now you are shown that there is a wrong identification. There is a mistake that we are making, but because that mistake is made universally, it becomes a norm. But Vedanta helps you to remove that mistake, that you are not as good as the physical body. Then where is the second sense of I, which is a very prominent sense of I that we have? Okay? That is with reference to what we call all the subtle functions of our body. Okay. So one of the main things which is uh, part of the sukshma body is what we call the mind. So when I make the statement 
that I am happy, I am sad, I am stressed, okay? that I am jealous, I am angry. All these are conclusions where I equate the nature of I with the condition of the mind. Is it true? Is this identification real? In order to show us what is the relationship between I and the mind, Vedanta helps us to see that mind is actually nothing but series of thoughts. In one day, you have how many thoughts? 60,000 of thoughts, somebody said and each thought comes and goes. Okay. So, if you are as good as the thought, then when the thought comes, you appear, you are born, and when the thought goes, you are dying. Is it true? No. You are very much present to know the presence and absence of your thoughts. Okay. So therefore, each thought, whether it is a happy thought or a sad thought or a neutral thought or a thinking thought or whatever it is, right? Each one has only a momentary presence. It comes and it goes. Okay? And I am the one who objectifies coming and going of every thought. So I am distinct from the thought. So I am not the mind. Then that is what we call the subtle body. The subtle body includes also prana and the, uh, the uh, capacity of your senses. Again, the capacity of, uh, capacity of your senses, it, it changes over a period of time which you objectify um, and therefore it is not you. Anything that you objectify is not you. So sukshma sharira is also not you. Okay. Then what is important to understand is that in every uh, tradition there is this um, understanding that a hum that who I am is something which is other than the physical body and the mind that I have been given at this particular point in time. So Vedanta talks about what we call the causal body. Okay? It says it's true that any action that you do at present okay, will have a result and that result will become a cause for you not only to have different experiences in this life but for you to gain different bodies and mind in different births to experience the world differently. So this is what we call the causal body. The causal body is all the causes which have not yet fructified will produce different sets of bodies at different times for you to experience the world differently. Okay. So now the question is so that particular idea exists in most of the religion they think that there is a soul, there is an entity which has a transmigration, it goes from one place to the other and that seems to be like the final reality and everybody tries to kind of do some good actions so the soul goes to a good place. Okay? But according to Vedanta, it is not really I, it is what they call a causal body. Let us look at what is causal body. The causal body, is it I or not? That is the question. Okay? I perform an action, right? And then the result comes to me. That the causal body is nothing but accumulated results, which are not yet manifested. Okay? So that result is certainly not I. Okay? If one result is not I, I perform an action and result accrues. If one result is not I, series of results don't become I. So even the causal body is not who you are essentially. Okay. Then the next question is then who you are. Okay. Neither you are the physical body which is what we call sthula sharira 
nor you are sukshma sharira the subtle body nor you are the causal body which is transmigrating from one place to the other okay then if that is, all three are not i then who am i so where do you look for this i you don't have to go and look somewhere else because i is something which is always present it is always present it is the only thing which is self evident to you so you don't have to go and search for i so this is where vedanta shows you gives throws light on who you are in order to do that it shows you the fact that there is a mind now let us look at the mind each thought comes and goes then i am present to come to know the absence and the presence of the thought so what is this i this i is awareness or consciousness because of which i come to know the presence of a given thought okay so i am that consciousness when the thought comes consciousness is knowing the presence of a thought when the thought goes and gives rise to another thought consciousness is so the consciousness is something which is invariable in and through thoughts okay so i am that awareness this is what if you really uh, begin to understand who you are then you are already free from all the limitations of the physical body you are already free from all the limitations of your mind you are already free from all the future causes that will bring different bodies and minds for you to experience the world differently okay so you are that awareness which is already free and this is what was initially said and about that awareness you may construe that it is my personal awareness okay it's something which is confined to me so i have one awareness you have one awareness the other body uh, of the person has one awareness so it makes you see that when you give up your sense of i in the physical body mind and senses and you come to this awareness and the other person comes to that awareness right and the other person comes to that awareness where do you draw the boundary between one awareness and the other awareness okay generally we draw the boundaries with reference to different bodies that's true different bodies are different but if i already say that i am not the body and i am not the mind i am that awareness where will i put a limit to that awareness there is no limit to that awareness this awareness is everywhere it's only one awareness to make you understand so there is no individuality there it is just one limitless awareness to make you understand this particular idea a very important example is given okay so let's say that there is this a cup space the cup space seems to be confined to this cup so here it is cup and anything else is outside okay but what is the reality is has the cup really broken the space and cut the space and confined the space no all that is here is one undivided space okay it has never become in fact this cup is pervaded by space the space the cup cannot confine the space okay so when this cup moves from here to here it is not that the cup space moves from here to here in one 
unmoving space, the cup moves. So what cup space which seemed confined here is now released and here it seems to be confined. Now it is released and now here it seems to be confined. But space is undivided one whole. Similarly, awareness is in which all the different bodies are moving but with reference to the body-mind-sense complex like the cup, this awareness seems to be confined. But actually it is free. There is only one free awareness in which all the different body-mind-senses are moving. Okay, So that is who you are. And there, there are no two. It is not the I of you is I uh, different from I of me. If you put your I not in the body-mind-sense complex, but in the awareness, then there are not many eyes at all. There is only one I, the awareness. So, when you have examined the cause of the universe, you have come to all knowledge and the presence of all knowledge in all the different names and forms. When you have examined the nature of I, the true nature of I, which is distinct from physical, subtle and causal body, you have arrived at awareness which is in and through everything. So finally, you need to resolve in order for the equation to be resolved you need to find a point of resolution. In order to find the point of resolution, you need to ask one more question. What is the relationship between all knowledge, which is on one side, and awareness, which is on the other side? What is the relationship? In order for us to understand what is the relationship, again, Satyam and Mithya are very important. Okay? Because if there are two things, one is all knowledge and the other thing which is awareness, then you cannot say that uh, you are limitless. You cannot say that. Because any two things, one will limit the other. You cannot say you are free from all limitations. In order for you to be free from all limitations, there has to be only one limitless thing. And if there is only one limitless thing, everything else has to be mithya. Mithya means it must have a dependent reality on that limitless thing. Okay. So now one of it has to be dependent. Either all knowledge is dependent upon awareness or awareness is dependent upon all knowledge. So which one is what? Okay. Now, here we understand that any knowledge, whether it is little knowledge, when I look at my own buddhi, okay, my little buddhi that is there, it requires first the presence of awareness for any thought to take place. Without awareness, there is no possibility of any intelligence or any knowledge. If I extend the same argument, even all knowledge, for it to be there, there has to be first the presence of awareness. Without awareness or consciousness, you cannot think about or you cannot construe all knowledge. So that means all knowledge also depends upon consciousness for its existence. The ultimate reality in this whole creation is awareness, consciousness, which is you, which is your real nature, okay? which from the standpoint of the whole creation is the cause of the creation, which is all knowledge. And within that all knowledge in is all the bodies, of everyone including you which is your physical body and everything else in the universe okay so therefore this awareness on one hand 
manifests as all knowledge and on the other hand every given form in the universe and you identify with one given form and you make that mistake and you make it real and you struggle and struggle and struggle to get rid of that uh, smallness without questioning the conclusion that you have about the nature of I. As long as you take what you think to be the physical body mind sense complex okay, and try to solve the problem there is no solution. But if you see the whole creation from the standpoint of Vedanta what you discover is I am the awareness from me is all knowledge and the entire creation including all bodies and minds and everything galaxies time space everything depends upon that all knowledge and all knowledge in turn depends upon I the awareness then you have a totally different vision of the world you understand that Brahman is Satyam Brahman is that limitless reality which is you which has independent existence and the entire Jagat the entire universe is Mithya it has a dependent reality dependent reality on all knowledge that all knowledge also has a dependent reality on that awareness and this is who I am okay so this is the vision of Vedanta totally different from who you think you are. So the end I just wanted to give an analogy. The analogy is that of the ocean, the wave and the water. Okay? The individual is equated to a wave limited in time, space, functions in every way. Okay? Ocean is equated to all knowledge Ishwara which contains which is the source from which every wave comes is sustains every wave and unto which every wave goes so ocean is equal to Ishwara the cause of the universe but if you really look at the reality then it is nothing but water okay so if the wave has understood my nature is nothing but water then the wave can say that the entire ocean and the ocean which contains all different waves is nothing but me but that wave is not talking from the standpoint of the form wave it's talking from the standpoint of water which is its real reality okay so this is what we call the having the knowledge of oneself or removing the ignorance about oneself as being already free and already limitless.